All right, guys, this is Jake Berkey from BerkeyRacing.com. I'm here with Travis Lovett, and he came to me wanting his suspension to do a little bit better. He's got a bounty hill that's coming up, and one of the things that he said was the buggy was a little bit out of control and the tires weren't staying planted. So what I'm going to show you guys how to do today is do a little bit of suspension tuning. We're going to pull off this shock right here and uh, show you how that we take everything apart and do a valving change. Now, a lot of times I see buggies out on the trail that are... They've got the motor, they've got the right tires, they've got the right axles, but they struggle everywhere they go and they don't seem to know why. The biggest thing that you can do is tune your suspension to make it so that your vehicle is propelled forward in the correct direction, tires stay planted, and you keep on doing what you need to do. So we're going to show you how to do that and uh, we'll cut for a second and pull apart a shock. we're back once you get the shock off the vehicle you're gonna need a number of tools to be able to take it apart you're gonna need some nitrogen to recharge the shock you're gonna need a gauge to take the pressure off the shock before you tear it apart and also put the nitrogen back in uh, if you get a little happy and spill some fluid you're gonna need some shock oil to put back into it um, I like to put soft jaws on my vise in order to keep it from scarring the side of the body whenever I tighten it up to break the components loose um, you could definitely need a hammer a spanner wrench, Allen headset, a prick, and a flathead screwdriver to take apart the components. Now inside the shaft there's going to be a nut on the inside and it's kind of a pain to break loose without an impact gun. So make sure you get yourself an impact gun to be able to break that nut loose. We're working on a Radflow shock so we've got some uh, shim stacks that are sitting over here. You can order them directly from Radflow. They'll ship them in and you can just bolt them right on or you can make your own shim stacks depending on what you want from a number of other ones combined. We'll get right back to taking this thing back apart. All right, now that you've got the shock off, flip it upside down and pull straight down on your spring pack and that will release this little snap ring up here on the top. Pop that snap ring off and it'll come straight out the top. Little snap ring. Then pull straight up on the spring assembly and the spring will come off. Then you slide the rest of the assembly up off the shaft. Then you're gonna wanna flip it upside down or right side up and you're gonna to have to relieve all the nitrogen off of the shock. So you're gonna take this, put it on your Schrader valve, tighten it down, pierce it, and then hold this up at an angle and release the pressure. That way any oil that gets trapped in that orifice will come up the line and then drain back into the shock. Just for time's sake, we went ahead and did that just a second ago. Take the shock, flip it back upside down, put it back in your vise, and you're gonna to have to break this little nut loose with your Allen head. There's a little bitty set screw that sits right here. You're gonna break that loose, spin this off, and that's what keeps this ring from locking down or from walking off and keeping it locked down. Take your spanner wrench, set it in the recessed holes on the valve keeper. And I like to just slide it up here on this rubber piece and kind of put it at an angle and kind of tighten it up so it just stays there. Now that you've got the nitrogen pressure off, you can push down on the seal housing and remove the snap ring that holds it all into place. So you push down, all right, and come in here and pop that snap ring off, okay? Be careful because if there's any pressure left on this, it'll try to blow out on you and you don't want that to happen. It makes a hell of a mess. Pull straight up on everything. It should all come up as one unit. All right. Try to keep as much oil in the shock as possible. If you spill any, then you'll have to go through the process of actually putting the right amount of CCs back into the shock. So we didn't spill any when we pulled it apart. Just let as much of it as you can drain out. All right. Then bring it over to a nice, clean workstation so that you can take it all apart. Now, when the shock is in its traveling state and it's going back and forth, if you look really close, there's shim packs that are on top and bottom of the shaft. And what that is, is that's your compression and rebound. Basically, as the shock goes down into the housing, the oil comes through, gets this top shim pack, and the thicker the shim pack, the more it resists the travel downward. So it's kind of like a leaf spring. You can make out different shims 
by stacking them thicker or thinner. Now, the compression's on the back side so that as the shaft travels down through the body of the shock, oil comes in these passages, hits this bottom shim stack, and resists the amount of pressure that can be pushed upward. So, um, Travis's main goal was to keep the tires on the ground. We noticed that he was hopping a lot. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of shim stacks out of the rebound side. That's gonna allow the tires to return back to the ground a little bit quicker. If you do too much, then the vehicle will become unpredictable and it'll start to lean really bad. So compression valving and rebound valving is all dependent on what the driver wants. And you're gonna to have to play around a lot with your shocks to be able to make them right. On my buggy, I've pulled these shocks apart at least 10 times in the past two years, and probably five times per year, to be able to tune them. Now, I've gotten to the point where I'm very, very comfortable with them, and I really feel like they're working well. So, uh, don't be surprised if you make a valving change and it doesn't work out properly right off the bat. Um, you need to do a little bit of research to understand how each style of the shim pack is going to affect your driving style and what you're doing. And then once you get comfortable, make a change. Don't do a change every single weekend. Make a change, run it three or four times, watch a couple of videos, really feel how it feels, and then if you wanna make a change, do another one. This is how simple it is to break these shocks apart. We'll make the valving change, we'll put everything back together, we'll throw it on the buggy, and we'll go out racing. After you do that a couple times, you know what? You'll be good. So keep on the suspension because that's gonna be one of the biggest things that's gonna help you out on the trail.